Welcome to the Getting Started series for SD-SIM. SD-SIM is a software framework for developing and running state and transition simulation models. In this video, you will download and install the software, create a new model library, build and run a simple state and transition simulation model, and learn how to view graphs of your results. To begin, we will first need to download a free software product called SynchroSim. SynchroSim allows you to run a wide range of different models, one of which is STSIM. To download SynchroSim and STSIM, navigate to www.apexrms.com and click on the download link. You will then receive instructions on downloading and installing the software. Note that if you navigate to www.synchrosim.com this takes you to the main SynchroSim page, which has a lot more information on both SynchroSim and on state and transition simulation models. There is a link to tutorials, which includes this tutorial, but also the previous tutorial describing the theory behind state and transition simulation models. In this current tutorial, we'll be creating a simple three-box state and transition simulation model. Once I have downloaded and installed the software, I can start SynchroSim by looking for it under the Start menu or by simply typing SynchroSim into the Start bar. Now, as I said before, SynchroSim is designed for being able to run and develop many different kinds of models. So when I first choose the File menu and select New Library, I am presented with many different options for the types of libraries that I can create. I'm going to select SD-SIM, State and Transition Simulation Model, and I'm going to keep the default name and location for my library. Now that I have a library created, I can start defining the different properties of my State and Transition Simulation Model. I can now create the definitions or building blocks for the simple model that I want to build. Now as a reminder, I'm going to resize the SynchroSim window so you can see the simple model that I want to create on the right. As a reminder, from the previous tutorial on the theory of state and transition simulation models, this is a simple three-box model with one box representing deciduous forest, another box representing mixed forest, and a third box representing coniferous forest. Now the arrows represent the transitions that can move a particular location in space from one vegetation state to another. So in blue, we have succession moving from deciduous through to mixed forest to coniferous forest. In red, we have fire transitions that will move mixed and coniferous forest back to deciduous and not shown but also possible is a fire transition in deciduous itself. And finally, we have in purple a harvest transition that can move coniferous back to deciduous forest. Now to set my model definitions, I'm going to right click on the definitions and select open. And the first thing that I'll do is I'll navigate to the terminology tab where we can define the language that we want to be used in the user interface. For example, I can decide that instead of um, using acres as my area unit, I can choose hectares. I can, instead of calling the boxes uh, first using the word class, I can select to use the word forest type. Now, in STSIM, a landscape can be stratified in three possible dimensions. Now, for this simple example, you require just at least a single primary stratum. And in this case, we will have a single stratum called entire forest. As far as states, I'm going to create three forest types. Deciduous, mixed, and coniferous.
Now, I don't plan to be using any subclasses, but I will define at least a single subclass to represent all forest types, called all. And now I have the different forest types or state classes that I will be using in my mob. Next, I will define the different types of transitions that can occur. And in this case, there's three. I'm just going to resize so you can see. These are the transition types. So I'm going to create succession, fire, and harvest. Now that I have completed my model definitions, I can create my first simulation scenario. To do so, I can right click on definitions and select new scenario. I'm going to give it a name, an owner, and a description. Now for this scenario, I'm going to run a simulation of the forest landscape without timber harvest. So I'm going to call this scenario No Timber Harvest. And I'll give it a short description. Click OK. Now to view and edit the properties of the scenario, I can either right click on it and select properties, or I can go to the scenario, scenario menu and select properties. And I'm just going to expand this window so I can see the properties a little bit more clearly. The first tab that this window opens with is the summary tab that includes the title, owner, and description, and I can edit those here if I would like. Now, the next tab is the run control, and this is where I define for how long I would like my simulation to run and for how many Monte Carlo iterations or realizations. So I'm going to set the start time step to zero. If I wanted to, I could set it to uh, 2019. And I'm going to set the end time step to 40, so the model will run for 40 years. And I'm going to run the model for 100 Monte Carlo realizations. Now for this example tutorial, I'm not going to be using a spatial simulation. So this will be a non-spatial simulation. In other words, I won't be initializing it with maps, and I won't be able to produce maps of the results. The next tab is called the Transition Pathways, and this is where I define um, the boxes and arrows that are shown in the conceptual model on the right, and set the probabilities for the different kinds of transitions that can occur. Now to add uh, boxes or state classes to the model, I right click on the Transition Pathways screen and select Add State Class. And I'm going to begin by adding the Deciduous State Class on the left. I will then right click again and add the uh, Mixed State Class. And finally I will right click and add the Coniferous State Class. Once I've added the state classes, I can create transitions that move a uh, parcel of land from one state class to another by either right-clicking on the state class and selecting open or simply double-clicking on it. And again, I'll resize this screen here so we can see it a little bit more clearly. So this is the deciduous forest state class. And there's two types of transitions that can occur. First of all, there's a transition that can take deciduous to mixed forest, which is the transition type succession. And I'm going to give that an annual probability of 10% or 0.1. And I'm going to define the minimum age at which this can happen. Now I don't see a minimum age field here, but if I right click, you'll note that there's a number of fields which are optional. And so I'm going to turn on the age min field, and this will allow me to set the minimum age for succession to be 10 years. Next, I'm going to add another transition, and this is a transition that will take deciduous back to itself, resetting the age to zero. And that is if a fire were to occur on this parcel of land. Now for the annual probability of fire for this state class, I'm going to set that to be 5%, or on average, a fire occurring about once every 20 years. Next. You can see when I close that box that I have now arrows taking me from deciduous to mixed for succession and a little circle representing the fire transition from deciduous back to itself. 
To add transitions to mix, again, I can right click and select open or double click. And so for mixed, uh, I would like to define the minimum age that's possible for this class. If you recall, a forest had to be at least 10 years of age to be able to transition from deciduous to mix. So if I right click on the table, I can set the age min for this state class to be 10 years. And for mixed transitions, I'm going to add a transition from mix to conifer, which will be of the succession transition type. And again, a probability of 10% or 0 0.1. And as with uh, succession from deciduous to mixed, I would like to set a minimum age for succession from coniferous, uh, from mixed to coniferous. And I'm going to set that age minimum to be 20 years of age. Now, um, the second transition that can occur will take mixed back to deciduous, and that is if a fire were to happen on this particular on a on a parcel of land with mixed forest, it would go back to deciduous. I'm going to set the probability of fire to be uh, 0 0.08, or about 8 percent per year. And finally, I would like to define transitions for coniferous. I can double click on that box resize this screen. As with mixed, there's a minimum age at which coniferous can occur, and I'm going to set that to be 20 years of age. And so uh, fire transition will transition coniferous back to deciduous, and I'm going to give that a probability of 0 0.15, or about 15 percent per year. And I'm going to also add a harvest transition, which will transition coniferous forest back to deciduous as well. Now, instead of using uh, probabilities, I'm going to uh, set a target area for this transition. So for now, I can just put a value of 1 for the probability. Now, harvest, even though coniferous forest starts at age 20, I'm going to say that harvest cannot really happen until the forest reaches at least 30 years of age. So I'm going to set an age minimum of 30 years for timber harvest. And I've completed um, the three kinds of transitions for these three types of forests that are shown in the conceptual diagram. At this point, just to be able to show a little bit more uh, of the software screen, I'm going to maximize the size of the software interface. And if I click on this button that says Arrange All, it will line up my windows in a way that I can see them all. The next step is to set how much of each forest type and age I have at the beginning of my simulation. And to do so, I click on Initial Conditions. Now for this example, I'm going to simulate a hypothetical landscape, which is a total of 1,000 acres in size and has 1,000 simulation cells. That means that each uh, simulation cell or parcel of land that I'm simulating represents a parcel of land that is one hectare in size. Now here I can say how much of each forest type occurs on the landscape, and I'm going to right click on this grid as well to show the optional fields of age min and age max. Now to define the initial distribution of states in the landscape, I'm going to say that at the start of my simulation, a certain number of a proportion of the landscape or percent of the landscape is going to start as deciduous forest uh, with an a maximum age up to 10 years and that's going to represent about 40 percent of the landscape. Similarly, for mixed forest it's going to range in age from 10 to 20 years of age and that's going to represent another 40 percent of the landscape and for coniferous forest, that's going to, at the beginning of my simulation, range in age from 60 to 100 years of age, and that's going to represent 20% of the landscape. Note that these values don't necessarily need to add up to 100. Uh, they can be represented as acres or proportions of the landscape, and then the model will renormalize at the start of the simulation. Now the last scenario property that I need to define is uh, the transition targets. If you recall, this is an er a scenario where I don't want to simulate timber harvest. So I'm going to specify a target for the harvest transition type with a target area of zero acres per year. Now I'm ready to run my scenario. 
I can right click and select uh, run or I can uh, click on the run button or go to the scenario menu and select run. And I'll be prompted to save and I'll say yes. Now STSIM is designed to be able to run uh, iterations in parallel when you have multiple processors on your computer. So you can see uh, seven jobs running in parallel right now. And the number of jobs that you want to run is by default set to the number of cores on your computer minus one. And that leaves one extra core for being able to do other tasks while your simulation is running. Now to view results, I'm going to close the run monitor. And on the bottom left of this window here, I see a tab called Charts. And if I click on the first button, that will create a new chart. I'm going to call this start chart uh, states and transitions. And I'll just move this window over here. I'm actually going to resize it by clicking the Arrange All. And so here on the left is where I can select the variables that I want to create charts of. So I'm going to expand the state classes and I'm going to create a chart of the amount of area in each state class disaggregated by forest type. I'm also going to create a chart of the amount of area undergoing different kinds of transitions and I'm going to disaggregate that by transition type. And I can click apply and what I see here is a line chart of the average amount of area in the three different state classes and the ama average amount of area undergoing the three different types of transitions. Because we ran many Monte Carlo iterations, I can also get a sense of the variability across all of my iterations. And I can do that by clicking on the percentile. And I'm going to choose to go from the 2.5 percentile to the 97.5 percentile. And this represents the 95% Monte Carlo confidence intervals. I can click, click Apply. And that's what's represented by the shaded area. So you can see both the amount of coniferous area and mixed area decreasing over time, the amount of deciduous area increasing as we have uh, fire occurring on the landscape and succession occurring on the landscape. And for this scenario, we have no timber harvest occurring. Now, uh, to end this tutorial, what I'd like to do is add one more scenario where we apply uh, some timber harvest to the landscape. And to do that, I'm going to right click on uh, timber harvest and I'm going to select copy. And then I'll right click on definitions here and select paste. And if I double click on this copied scenario, it'll bring me to the summary tab where I can rename my scenario. And I'm just going to say harvest 20 hectares per year. And the only thing that I really need to change is go to the transition targets tab and change the target area for harvest from 0 to 20. I can then right click on this new scenario and select run again. And we'll just wait till the run completes here. And we see that as soon as the run completes, the results for that second scenario show up immediately on the chart that I already was displaying results for the serious scenario. And now we see in red results uh, for what happens when we add 20 hectares per year of timber harvest. Uh, and most importantly here, you can see that initially we start out harvesting 20 hectares per year, but there is simply not enough area in the old conifer state class to be able to maintain that level of harvest. And we see a fall down. Uh, and then a little bit of harvest happening eventually over time as we have some area coming into that um, older conifer state class. That completes the first tutorial in our series. In the next tutorial, we'll be looking at running spatial simulations in SD-SIM. Thanks for listening.